All right, let us start. Right, so I hope you all should be able to hear what I am uh, saying. And let me check whether the board is properly. Yeah, it's fine. So, board is working. And hope my voice is clear. If it is not, uh, you can uh, let me know. Right, so we will restart our. Course, right? So let's uh, think here. So we will do last time we talk about numbers, right? And then basically the algebraic properties, right? Axiom one, and then the multiplicative and additive axioms, right? And then we talk about inequalities. Right, axiom two order properties. Right, we talk about what do we mean by greater than, less than, or greater than, equal, less than, equal, and all those things. And then we talk about some uh, properties or, or the properties associated with the inequalities. Right. So today we are going to start a new thing called absolute value. So this concept is called absolute value. You all know that, right? So you study it in very low level mathematics, right? What do we mean by absolute value, right? So if, if absolute value of a positive number is the same number, and absolute value of a negative number is the positive part of that number, right? So you know, absolute value of minus one is plus one. An absolute value of plus one is also plus one, right? So you all know that absolute value is always a non-negative value, right? So and then you can always find the value of the absolute value of any value, any number, right? So given number. So we define this formally. Right, so let us define it. For for any real number a, right? Right? So the absolute value, we write it in between two bars, right? That is a notation for an absolute value, right? The value written in between two bars, right? Defined by Right, so we define absolute value of A as A if A is a non-negative number and absolute value of A is minus A if A is a negative number, right? So this is the example, right? Absolute value of one, or let me say four, two, right? That is, 
because two is a positive number, so it is two itself. Absolute value of minus two, because minus two is a negative number, it should be minus eight. So it is minus of minus two, right? But we already know minus of minus is plus, right? In the first section, right? When we talk about the algebraic properties, we prove this results. Minus of minus a is a. So this is okay. So that is how we define absolute values. So once we define absolute values. So when we define absolute values, we can start talking about some properties, right? So I'll write it as a proposition. A proposition, right? First one. The only time absolute value can become zero if the term inside the absolute value is zero. Right? So that is the only case where you have zero for absolute value. Right? If the value is zero, then only the absolute value is zero. Then second one. Right, so absolute value of A and absolute value of minus A are, and so I believe I defined this notation, right? So this is called for all, right? A belongs to R, right? So absolute value of minus A and absolute value of A are same, right? Third property, product. A multiplied by B, right? So when you multiply two numbers and take the absolute value, it is same as taking the absolute value separately and then multiply them together. That is also true for all A comma B belongs to real number. That is true for all real numbers. Third, fourth property, If, if absolute value is bounded above by a non net zero or, or bounded above by a strictly positive value, right? Absolute value of A is bounded above less or equal to C for some strictly positive C, right? Then A is bounded in between minus of C and plus C. Right, so this is the another property. The last one is the consequence of this. The last one is Absolute value of minus a is less or equal to a, right? And then it's less or equal to absolute value of a, right? So a value is bounded below by minus of its absolute value and above by the positive of its absolute value. So we shall prove all these results. So let us prove them one by one.
Okay, so first one. Right, so we, we need to prove absolute value of A is zero if and only if A is zero, right? So we can prove both sides, right? So first we take absolute value of A zero, right? So then we have to prove A is zero, right? So that is what we have to prove because we take absolute value of A is zero. For the sake of contradiction, right, if A is non-zero, then minus A is also non-zero, you know that, right? So if A is non-zero, then minus A is non-zero. But in this case, if A is non-zero, right, then minus a is non-zero. So if irrespective of whether a is positive or negative, right, absolute value of a is non-zero because absolute value of a is a o minus a, right? One of those results. But if a is non-zero, this is non-zero. If a is non-zero, this is non-zero. So this is non-zero. So clearly, whenever a is non-zero, absolute value of a cannot be zero. But we take absolute value of a equal to zero. So the only possibility is thus A must be zero. Okay. So this is the one half of the proof, right? Other half is obvious, right? Converse part is trivial, right? Because you all know if A is zero, then clearly absolute value of A is zero, right? So that's not a big thing to prove. So the second part, you have to prove minus A, absolute value of minus A and absolute value of plus A are same, right? So clearly this also can be proved directly, right? If A is zero, then minus A is zero. So absolute value of A is absolute value of minus A, right? So in this case, right? So you know that if A is zero, then minus A is zero. So absolute value of A and absolute value of minus A are same. Right, so and that value is zero, right? So you clearly know that, right? This value is zero. So the other case, A is positive, right? So you know there are three possibilities. For a real number A, we already studied in the uh, inequality properties, right? The order properties. For any value, any number, there are three possibilities, right? The number can be zero, greater than zero, less than zero. So here, you have to take all three cases, right? If A is strictly positive, then minus A is strictly negative, right? So you know that if A is positive, absolute value of A is A, right? And absolute value of minus A is minus of minus A, that is A, right? Because minus A is negative. So minus A is negative means absolute value of minus A is according to the definition minus of that value. So that is A. So in this case also, minus A. So the other case, Similar, if A is negative, then minus A is positive, right? 
the absolute value of A is, you know, because A is negative, absolute value of A should be minus A, right? But minus A is positive, so absolute value, value of minus A is the same value, so that is minus A. So in this case also, A and absolute value minus A are same. So this is the second part. The third part, right, A dot B is, so that is also you can do by the same way, right, so if A is positive and B is positive, right, so if you take A, B and both of them are positive, right, then a dot B is also positive, right? So you already know when you multiply two positive numbers, you get positive value, right? So in this case, you know that absolute value of A is A, absolute value of B is B, right? And absolute value of A dot B is A dot B, right? Because A is positive, so absolute value of A is A, B is positive, so absolute value of B is B. A dot B is positive, so absolute value of that is A dot B. So here, clearly, you can say A dot B is basically A dot B, that is absolute value of A dot absolute value. Right? So that is one case. The other case, one of them is positive and the other one is negative, right? So now you have two numbers. So if it is zero, then you have nothing to prove, right? So there's uh, no uh, nothing to prove when A or B is zero, right? So we just exclude that case right? because we already know if that is zero, if one of them is zero, right? A, if A is or B is zero, then A or B is zero. So then there is nothing to prove. So I skip that part. So here I can take one case. The other case is if A is positive and B is negative, right? So in that case, you know that A dot B is negative, right? A is positive and B is negative. So you have A dot B is negative. So in this case, you will see absolute value of A is A, right? B is negative, so absolute value of B is minus B, right? And A dot B is negative, so A dot B is minus of A dot B. Okay. So in this case also, you can see that A dot B is same as absolute value of A dot absolute value of B, right? So. Right, because A dot B is negative, you have A dot B as minus of A dot B, but in the first section, right, algebraic properties, right, so we see that minus of A dot B is same as A dot minus B, right, A is absolute value of A and minus B is absolute value of B, so that is A dot minus B. So that's the thing and the other one is similar, right? So other case. Right, so you know that A dot, A is negative and B is positive case is same as a greater than zero or similar type, right? Not same. It is similar to what we did there, right? So that's the. Now, the other part, right? 
for a positive number if absolute value is bounded above by a positive number right then the value inside the absolute value is bounded above and below by negative and positive of that bound okay so let us prove the other part fourth part right right it is given that a dot a absolute value of a is less or equal to c right and c is strictly positive right so we have to show that it is between my a is between minus c and c so a absolute value of a has two cases right So. But you know, absolute value of a is a o minus a, right? So those are the two cases you will have, right? For absolute value of a, it is a o minus a. So if it is a it means a is less or equal to c if it is minus a right if it is minus a then it is minus a less or equal to c right so you can combine both of them right so before combining both of them right but minus a less or equal to c implies right you know that in the inequalities right the order properties you study that when you multiply by the negative number the inequality changes right so this means minus of minus a is greater or equal to minus c right so when you multiply by minus on both sides you know that the inequality switches its sides so this means a is greater or equal to minus c so now what you have is you have this one right, and this one right this one you have and then this you simplify and get here right? so you have these two boxes so you can combine both of them right right so this is this is minus c is less or equal to a and a Let's say equal to c. So when you combine all of them, you get minus c less or equal to a. Let's say equal to c. Right. The last part, right. So it is same, right, as four. Right. This part, you know that. Yeah. You know that absolute value is always a positive number. So in any case, right, a is less or equal to absolute value of a for all a in real numbers, right? That you know, right? You know that a is less or equal to absolute value of a for all real numbers, right? So if a is positive, it is equal, and if a is negative, then absolute value of a is greater than or greater than absolute the value of a. Right. So now this is same as this result. Right. So here, right. 
sorry. No, it doesn't work. So absolute value of A is let's say equal to absolute value of A. That is obvious you have this, right? So similar to this, absolute value of A is let's say equal to absolute value of C. So this is your C now. Right? So if you take this as C, then according to this results, minus of C less or equal to A, less or equal to C. It's a, so let me write here. Right, so take C is equal to absolute value of A in the above. That clearly shows you that the result is true. Okay, so that's basically a consequence of number four. So there is nothing to move here. So these are the properties of inequalities here. Okay. So there is another type of relationship which we have in absolute values. Right? So those are called triangle inequalities. Right? So you know that A dot B is absolute value of A plus absolute, sorry, dot absolute value of B. But what happens when you have plus? Right? So that is called triangle inequality. So let me put that as a theorem. It has a name. And so this theorem is basically is talking about triangle inequality. Okay. So that says okay, so absolute value of A is less than sorry, absolute value of A plus B is less than or equal to absolute value of A plus absolute value of B. Right? So this is basically a Triangle inequality, right? You must have studied something like this in your vectors in A level, right? So you know that. Right? So if you have a vector A and vector B, then this vector is A plus B, right? So in a triangle, right? So two sides, sum of two sides is larger than the third size, right? So basically, so let me say, right? So in this case, you know that size of this vector, right, is greater than, sorry, less or equal to size of this vector plus size of that vector. You study that in your A level, right? So this is basically the similar type of triangle inequality, right? So if you consider these as vectors, Absolute value of A plus B is basically the size of the vector A plus B. Absolute value of A is the size of the vector A. And absolute value of B is the size of the vector B, right? So if you have A like this and B like this, then A plus B is the third side of the triangle. And then according to triangle inequality, right? So basically it's a rule of triangle, right? So if you want to have a triangle, the third side, size of the third side should be less or equal to the sum of the size of the other two sides. Right? So this is basically the triangle inequality. Right? So we can prove this.
Right. So first part. Okay, so this is something we already proved, right? The fifth, fifth part of the previous results, right? So minus absolute value of minus a is less so equal to a, less so equal to absolute value of a, and same can be written for b as well. Right? So now if you add both of them, right? When you add both of them. Okay, so when you add both of them, absolute value of A plus B minus of absolute value of A plus B is less or equal to A plus B is less or equal to absolute value of A plus absolute value of B. So now if you look at this, this is same as 4, right? If absolute value of minus of the same number, right? A plus B is bounded below by minus of say this and plus of this, right? Right, so then clearly you know, absolute value of A plus B is less or equal to absolute value of, absolute value of A plus absolute value of B, right? So according to fourth in the previous case, right? But you already know, absolute value of A is a positive number, right? Absolute value of B is a positive number. So when you're adding two positive numbers, you know you will get positive number. So absolute value of a positive number is basically, right, the same value itself. So you can write it without the absolute value outside, right. So this absolute value can be removed, right. That is not necessary because the term inside that big absolute value is, again, the sum of two absolute values. So that is basically a positive number. So you have nothing else to do with the absolute value, second absolute value, so you can remove, right? So hence, so hence absolute value of A, A plus B is less than equal to absolute value of A plus absolute value of B, okay? So there are two consequences of this result, right? So here it is about A plus B, absolute value of A plus B, right? So let us see what will happen if you have A minus B, right? What are the relationship we have for A minus B? Okay, so I write this as corollary. One, two,
Okay, so the other corollary is basically a consequence of the previous results, right? So this results absolute value of A minus absolute value of B's absolute value is less or equal to A minus B absolute value. And then absolute value of A minus B is less or equal to absolute value of A plus absolute value of B. So let us prove the one, results one, right? Proving one, you know that A, right? A is basically A can be written as A minus B plus B, right? Because you know you want to get A minus B there, right? So you write A as A minus B plus B. So that is triangle inequality A minus B plus absolute value of B, right? Similarly, Absolute value of B is B minus A plus A. That is basically that's so equal to B minus A plus A. Okay. Okay, so from this, this gives your B minus absolute value of A is less than B minus A, right? So if you move B to the other side, right? So this gives you B minus A, let's say you go to B minus A. So this is basically minus of absolute value of A minus B, right, is less or equal to inside the absolute value. If you take the minus out, right, you know that it is so you have this, right? So B minus A is less or equal to B minus A. So it is minus of absolute value of A minus absolute value of B is less or equal to minus absolute value of minus of A minus B. But absolute value of minus 1 is plus 1, right? So an absolute value of A minus B is A minus B. But from here, from the first one, you know that your absolute value of A, right? Right, so that's that's a minus of this, and here you have minus of absolute value of a minus absolute value of b. Let's say you get this value of a minus b. Right, so from the first one, you have absolute value of a minus b is let's say equal to that and this. Right. So. Right, but you know, right, by definition of absolute value, right. You know that absolute value of absolute value of a minus b is a minus b absolute value of a minus b no o minus of this. Right. So here o minus of this. Right. So if it is this, right, then this is 
And so from here, this is just so equal to a minus b, right? From here, we we'll say this is just so equal to a minus b, right? So both cases, right? That is less so equal to absolute value of a minus b. Okay, so then. So hence, absolute value of A minus absolute value of B's absolute value is less or equal to absolute value of A minus B. Okay. So this is the first part. Second part is quite easy. I do not need to do too much because you want to show A minus B. That is A plus minus B. Right. So you know that. First chapter, first section, you studied A plus minus B is same as A plus minus of B. Right? Now you apply this triangle inequality. So this is the so equal to absolute value of A plus absolute value of minus B. Right? So this is actually equal to absolute value of A plus absolute value of B. And minus, absolute value of minus B is absolute value of minus one times absolute value of B, so that is plus one and B, and so it's absolute value. So A minus B is the same equal to absolute value of A plus absolute value. Okay. So this is how we prove the corollaries of the triangle inequality, right? The important results is this, the triangle inequality, and then by using this, we can prove other uh, related results related to this absolute value. Okay. So these are the main properties of absolute value. Okay. So now what we are going to do is to we are going to go into some other numbers, right? So far, what we did is we talked about properties of numbers, right? So basically, some basic properties that will help us to develop the number system, right? So first we talk about addition and multiplication and the properties of that, right? And then we see how we can order the numbers, right? Greater than or equal or less than or equal. So that order properties. And then we see absolute values, right? So that is basically a relationship between minus and plus of the same number, right? So basically you can, from that you, you will see that there is a minus two and a plus two, there is a minus one and a plus one, things like that, right? So in the next class, uh, what we are going to do is to, we are going to try to build some numbers, right? So number sections, right? So in that case, what we are going to do is to, we are going to develop things like natural numbers, right? So basically, what we do is just I will briefly introduce you here. So we take zero and one, right? So let us take zero and one. Those are the only two values we know, right? In real numbers, right? So basically those are the two we have, right? So you don't know, study about other numbers yet. Like zero is added divided between you study one multiplicative identity you study, right? So those are the two numbers you actually study, right? All the others are axioms and properties. The number numbers in the sense you study only zero and one. Okay? But what we can do is we can start develop numbers from this, right? So by adding one plus one, right, you will get a number, right? And so that's basically two. And then two plus one, you get three, right? So, and then four and so on, right? So you can start building numbers like this, right? So forget being zero, when you start with one and two, three, four by six, that is basically natural numbers, right? And then when you include zero and then when you include minus of those numbers, that become integers. And then you can introduce fractions, rationals and all the other things, right? So though the, so what we are going to do in the next class is we are going to start with these natural numbers, 
and some properties of natural numbers basically some we are going to talk about the real principle of mathematical induction right so in the a levels they told you how to use mathematical induction right they tell you that okay you start proof for n is equal to one case and then assume that it is true for n is equal to k and then show that it is true for n is equal to k plus 1 so basically by mathematical induction you can say that the results is true for all n right so basically the first question in your uh, first part uh, the, the structure part of the uh, first part of your a level exam right so that is one always a question on mathematical induction so next class what we are going to do is to we are going to study the real principle right so you just do n is equal to 1 n is equal to k n is equal to k plus 1 is true but we are going to in here we are going to see why that is true right so that's what we will do and we will do that in the next class that will be tomorrow so i will stop here and then continue tomorrow